I think we all got to admit, life has gotten pretty strange. My problems 10 years ago, how am I going to get a job when I am obviously a street person? Problems now, ChatGPT told me to put power steering fluid in my brake reservoir. Normally, if you, I did a bunch of research and read all your guys' comments and stuff, and what I've concluded is that if I had just put in the power steering fluid, I could definitely suck it out with a shop back or something like that. But I drove on it a while, which means that there's probably some power steering fluid in the brake lines. Now, it drove extremely normally, but apparently the power steering fluid can mess up your seals and stuff. So, there was a place down the street and uh we're just gonna get the brake flushed the brakes flushed morning roundup a david and the new cr10 s is making kind of a test einstein and it's doing pretty good honestly yes i read all your comments about the eco mode so we're gonna check that out once it's done david you already know two sharks I'm gonna do this today this is the thing i don't feel like doing but i am going to do <sighs> two d20s and pipe can these guys got to get reset today and another pipe can forgot to do the thing with the product board last week but we got one thing uh one new product listed and yesterday was thursday even though i thought it was friday and so we've got one thing this week and we'll probably do the emo dragon or whatever we call it today i read all you guys suggestions definitely some good stuff in there I'm glad you guys liked this i mean i've done drippy painty art things before and it can be pretty cool you know it's a it's a whole thing but then you just know that here, here's the business mindset the entrepreneur mindset I know that there are going to be customers that are like, where the, where the paint's dripping? Where's the paint's dripping? And I mean, even if you like post the pictures and it looks like this, like they can look at this and see the paint dripping in the pictures and then they're gonna get it and they're like, whoa, the paint's dripping. And then one star review. But maybe it'll be fine. I'm just kind of banking on the coolness to make up for the fact that there's just that one person out there that's going to complain about it. Like I said, even if it's in the pictures. Yeah, I hope I didn't just talk myself out of that. No, I'm going to post it anyway. Yeah, I'll even like mention in the description that it's got a paint drip effect or something. Just so they have even less excuse. I'm telling you, like, being an entrepreneur is great, but the paranoia. I was not like this before. But once you like see what people say in reviews and stuff, it just makes you think about stuff like this. Anyway, we won't waste more time. I'm going to do the brake flush thing and get that sorted out. And we got two packages to drop off, which are pretty much, this place is just slightly past Klein's. Normally, I, I think it is a little dangerous to, it is supposed to be somewhat dangerous to drive with transmission fluid in your brake lines but i did it for a long time yesterday not a long time but like a half hour and actually everything was pretty normal it was a small amount of power steering fluid so i'm pretty confident i can get down the street yeah it's acting totally normal i'm pretty sure this brake flush will solve this problem it is always something. Yep, we're going to Grease Monkey. So I almost said into the camera, I bet they're out of brake fluid. They were out of brake fluid. But I had them call up another location and they do have brake fluid. Unless the guy was lying. It's always something. You know, something that is very true of a lot of experimental genres of music you know, experimental jazz, different things, is like, in order to make really great experimental music, you have to master the rules. And then it's like, once you master the rules, you'll know how to break them. I bet there are like programs and courses and stuff that teach how to vlog 
And I think it'd be interesting to learn and go through those courses, not so much to do the things that they tell me to do, but to know what the standard thing to do is, and then like figure out something a lot more interesting to do instead. Grease monkey number two. Well, they've got fluid and we're good to go. Good news is they can do it. Bad news is it's a hundred bucks. Although a hundred bucks used to be like a good amount. And nowadays it's like, that's practically like getting coffee. When I was growing up, an oil change was like 15 bucks, maybe 20 or 25 for a nice one. And now you'll pay like 70 bucks. I'm about to start changing my own oil, honestly. Sometimes I miss having a truck or a van because the clearance is high enough that it's really easy to change oil on those guys. Yup, unlimited luxury. Speaking of the old days, it's nice that I have a community of people that will tell me when I do something stupid. When I was doing the national tour for my music, which I only did one of those, um, me and the guy I was driving with, we had a rule when it came to anything car related, which is if you're worried about anything, you can tell me. Like if you're noticing any sound or something weird. I mean, he was, I don't wanna say he was a paranoid guy, but he could get a little anxious. But the thing is like, when you're driving through the Rocky Mountains or something, like something bad happening is a big deal. Some of these roads, see, I wish I was doing these vlogs back then. This was 2012. Some of these roads were like, there's a road, then there's a cliff and the cliff goes all the way down a mountain. And so like, you want to notice if something weird is happening. So I guess we could have a similar rule. It's like, I mean, don't just make stuff up. But if you notice me doing something crazy, you can tell me. I will listen. I did listen. And that's why I have a hundred dollar bill today. Wow, it's taken a long time. I have never gotten my brake flushed before. Brakes flushed before. I guess I have no idea how much time is normal. But if anything, it's a good, it's a good sign because they're doing a thorough job. Well, those guys did a really good job. I can tell that, I mean, I kind of watched them doing it the whole time. They got like every ounce of fluid out of the systems until it ran completely clean, which is probably what you're supposed to do. But it was a hundred bucks and that was a very unforced error, sort of, but could have been worse. There are worse emergencies in the world. I actually can tell the brakes are like extremely responsive, more responsive than they even were before. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention today and yesterday, stuff is already starting to sell more than normal, which is about what I expect from previous years. Christmas season has not started, but there are people who kind of in the middle of November start buying. These are the, not the smartest people, these are the second smartest people. The smartest people buy like in October or earlier for their Christmas gifts. But uh, yeah, you have some people who are fairly conscientious and plan ahead that start buying around this time. And then Thanksgiving hits and all the normies start buying. <laughs> and hey, I am grateful. And listen, every time I've ever bought Christmas gifts, I think I bought them around that time. Sometimes I would get stuff early, but I was never buying for a lot of people. So if anything, I'm in the post Thanksgiving camp, but yeah, it's already starting. See, the thing that's really great about the people that buy early is if you need any supplies or stock up or whatever, they kind of cover all the supplies that you have to stock up for Christmas. And you know, it's kind of nice. So there's gonna be extra money that I would normally not be getting that I can start stocking up all the paints, you know, all the shipping supplies, all that kind of crap. Now, longtime viewers will remember that I only really go to like eat out, like full on sit down kind of places on the 1st and 15th, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. And yesterday 
Wait, I don't know what date it is. I think yesterday was the 15th. Pretty sure that's true. So I think we are finally gonna go to the restaurant at the Fredonia Hotel. The Fredonia Hotel is kind of like debatably the most famous place in Nacogdoches. And they have three restaurants. Well, they have two restaurants and a bar that I think serves food there. Plus they have room service. It's almost like a fourth restaurant in a sense. Then one of them is a nice steakhouse that's like a hundred bucks a piece. We're not doing that. Maybe we'll do that after Christmas, but we are going to the First City Cafe. It is called that because Nacogdoches is the oldest city in Texas. But I think I want to segue there because, because it's fun to do and it's good video actually kind of chilly out there so i'm gonna wear the jacket that makes me look like i'm in a 90s hip-hop video this is nice a nice sunset ride watch you ahead here we go today's adventure yeah it actually is finally kind of chilly out it's fun doing this trip pretty much since the beginning of this series i've like kind of wanted to to take you guys to the Fredonia Hotel. It's actually it's really quite nice. I like want to I impulsively want to stay there and I have no reason to. See, when I've lived in major cities like Austin or Charlotte, um they have a lot of places that are this nice, either, you know, restaurants or hotels. It's very common to see really nice stuff downtown. But here in Nacogdoches, it's like not a thing, really. So there is one place in Nacogdoches that has, I guess what you could call fine dining and I guess a luxury hotel or a high-end hotel and a very nice cafe. Man, they've got some good stuff too. I don't even know what I'm gonna get. They had these Korean style tacos, which sounds weird, but they have like kimchi on them and like some sauces that I don't exactly recognize and like pulled pork or something. They're so good. There's like so many things, so many things they have that are good. You get to cut through these sort of downtown neighborhoods and stuff with nice little houses or sort of nice little houses. Nacogdoches is like just big enough that there are a few like sort of richy people rich, rich people. They've got their little shops and stuff downtown. That's the brewery, by the way. I have segwayed to this place many times. I always just leave the segway in the lobby and just act like that's where I'm supposed to leave it. People just kind of accept it if you do it confidently. There we go. The Fredonia. Nacogdoches' finest hotel experience. Yep, we did Korean tacos. I just don't know how to say no to this. And you are. You say your name is Korean. Let's take a stroll around the deck. They got a little live music. It's real nice out here. I think this is where we're gonna go after Christmas. Republic Steakhouse. Oh. Those were the nine flags that have flown above Nacogdoches, which nine different nations or city-states or whatever it is have flown flags over back. Very nice. Yeah, it almost seems like there was some kind of event going on. Oh, here it is. Yeah, some kind of SFA alumni event. <sighs> 
anyone that doesn't know, SFA is the local college here, university. There are a whole bunch of people in there dressed to the nines. Anyone that didn't catch that, that, that was the uh, Korean tacos. For some reason, they have chimichurri on them, which is like an Argentinian thing. So I don't exactly understand that choice, although it tastes amazing, um, but at least thematically. And those were cheese curds at the beginning with two of their signature sauces. The First City Cafe is the casual dining version. Republic Steakhouse is the fine dining version. And I only go there maybe once a year. The Republican, Republic Steakhouse rather. We lost some of the day to nonsense today, but it'll be all right. Back to the shop and nose back to the grindstone. To give you an idea of how quickly it got dark out, Goodwill is still open right now. I just don't want to go in there, but we've wasted enough time. I know that uh, people in like Norway and Sweden and Finland and Canada are laughing at me right now because if you think it's bad or God forbid Alaska or the Northern Territories, you know, if you think getting bad, getting dark this early, if you think getting dark this early is bad, that was a really confusing sentence. It's just nothing compared to like Canada or the Scandinavian countries. I just couldn't do it, man. Shop sweet shop. <laughs> I said early 90s hip hop, but maybe this is more of a boy band jacket. I don't care who you are, where you're from. There's no way it can be this cold out and me not get real cozy. It's the holiday season, a whoop de doo It is time to go bananas. If you thought there wasn't gonna be very much 3D printing content in this video, there is plenty to do, trust me. Trust me, compadre. These supports come off too. These are getting painted, of course, but that is one down, 14 to go. Oh yeah, in addition to all the bananas, let's try and get that uh, new printer put together, the new old unrepaired printer. There we go. That is all the bananas. Now it's time to paint them. All right, let's paint these little yellow boys, yellow to be boys. That probably seemed like it didn't take very long, but I assure you it did. All right, getting the pipe can ready. We're doing the tape and then we're you know, you've seen it before. Gandhi pipe, doing the black and white fade as is custom, customary for these guys. Came out pretty good, just a couple stringies here and there. Gandhi pipe, Gandhi pipe, can't be beat. The Gandhi hot cereal with the cocoa treat. Yes, <laughs> some Yes, We've got the printers reset. This is doing its thing. This is about to do its thing. And this is about to about to do its thing. Now we are finally going to do the extruder dealio on this guy. I don't know if you guys use mid journey, but I'm making some new backgrounds for the TVs. I stopped day trading for the holidays. A lot of times trading isn't that good around the holidays anyway. Although this year Bitcoin blew up a whole lot. So whatever. But uh, instead I'm making a bunch of new backgrounds. Obviously they're Chihuahua based backgrounds. This is a cyber chihuahua riding a shark through cyberspace. There, that's a pretty good one.
I've said this before, but the modification I make to these hot ends is we take the silicone sock and I cut this part off because the temperature is regulated just fine without that little nib right here, little thing. But sometimes plastic will get stuck on here or it's not, it's not like a common thing, but it really only gets in the way. So there's no reason to have this thing here. Just like that, you just snip it off with these guys. Real easy to do. Probably gonna make a shark with that one. So I made a whole bunch of Cyber Chihuahua wallpapers. They're all riding sharks through like cyberspace or some synth wave kind of backgrounds and stuff like that. Synth wave, vapor wave kind of thing. And I'll show you a few of them now. Now I'm using these for a screensaver called Picture River, which slowly like blends from one picture to the next one, but they make great backgrounds. And what I'll say is if you guys want a zip file with these 39 wallpapers I just created for your own use, just drop a comment below and I will send them to you. And if you want to have really cool, like, color changey, fade in, fade out effects like this, it's pretty old, but Picture River is a great screensaver to have. And I'm going to set it up on both of these. And it looks nice and freaky. In fact, at the end of the day, I think I'll set it on this one, I'll set it on this one, and I'll set it on the main one as well. But yeah, if you want your very own Cyber Chihuahua wallpaper set, just drop a comment below and I will get it to you. That's right, the Cyber Wawa collection could be yours. <laughs> T-Rex dish already took supports off. He just needs a little smoothing where the supports were, but it's gonna be a nice little boy right there. Finishing up a couple things. We got the wall drum stick hangers. These guys are almost perfect. It's actually kind of hard to heat gun them, they just move around. D20 bank, nice gold finish. Time to give kitty cat yellow eyes. There we go. Big day. Oh man, Ugh. As much as it sucked to have to do the brake flush thing this morning, I'm grateful that I was able to do it. And I'm grateful that several of you sleuths, if it even requires, uh, I don't even know if that rises to the level of being a sleuth, but uh, whatever you want to call it, I'm glad several of you told me the mistake. It is kind of a cool era we live in where you can do some seemingly innocuous thing and then people let you know, hey, you should not have done that thing. And then you can correct it. I don't really know what would have happened in the old days, but I'm glad I don't have to find out. I want to say that took something like two hours. It seemed like a really long time. But I'm glad it's done. I'm glad everything is just normal again. The taco has done well. People are favoriting it on Etsy and it seems to be getting views and stuff. It's a very striking object. It doesn't, doesn't surprise me at all that uh, maybe it'll kind of take off. Something I think about the big food sometimes is like, like I've gotten people messaging me on Facebook that I'm not connected to in any way, but they just found me because I'm the burger guy. They just saw a picture somewhere on the internet of me posing with a giant burger and they just want to know about it. So like sometimes when I'm making some of this big food, I think like, what, what if I got famous for this? <laughs> I guess being the taco guy, 
would be fine. It's a little like when you're writing songs as a songwriter. You should never write something. You should never write a song that you wouldn't want to be a famous song. I think it's Radiohead famously that really hates playing their song Creep. I always thought that's extremely lame because like, why did you write it then? Like if it wasn't an accurate depiction of something or an expression of something within you, like what, it, what did you write it for? But clearly they wrote it never thinking it was gonna be popular or not really thinking it was a hit. And you know, same thing is true of Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses, which I kind of hate Guns N' Roses, but it is their best song. And like Slash started playing that intro bit and like they weren't they didn't even really they weren't gonna keep it but like somebody just said it sounded cool so they stuck it on the album i may be getting that story a little foggy but it's something like that and of course the rest is history it's kind of the same thing with products it's like don't make anything that you wouldn't want to make like a thousand of because that can happen i'm grateful for all that stuff it's kind of easy for me to forget like what this was like at the beginning. Cause this just started with, I posted on Facebook, my first 3D printer that I got off of uh, Craigslist back when that was a thing six years ago, or maybe it was like seven years ago because I, I didn't start the business immediately. I messed with the 3D printer for a while before I actually started the shop and stuff. But yeah, it's like, it was a crazy dream. When I first moved to Nacogdoches from Austin, I just started having like crazy goals and stuff. And one of them was like, I'm gonna have a shop downtown. I was just trying to like visualize and like get motivated and stuff by having a big goal that drew me to it. I was probably imagining a shop that people like walked into or took custom orders or something like that, like a normal print shop paper you know but yeah turns out like online was going to be virtually all of the business so naturally that's what my shop looks like it's easy to forget that that was all a dream sometimes it's a strange thing when things actually work out because if you if you're an ambitious person the cost of that is that most of your work will not be rewarded in any significant way this is my eighth, my eighth or ninth business. I did guitar lessons and I was self-employed, but I don't know if I really consider that a business. I don't know, it's either eight or nine. And that's about how many you might have to do before something actually takes off. But I'm grateful for the struggle. I'm grateful for the process. We are the Gratitude Gang. So it is Gratitude Gang time, you guys. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to tell us in the comments what you're grateful for and what small moments in your life bring you joy, what uh, things you're working on, all that kind of stuff. And also, like I said earlier in the episode, uh, just drop a comment saying if you want my special... It's kind of like a Christmas gift. It's an early Christmas gift to the, all of the Gratitude Gang members. And uh, yeah, drop me a comment if you want me to send you that, because I will. Gratitude gang, I bid you adieu. Have a good one. These are the times that try men's souls.